Good Morning Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, and it is Wondrous Wednesday. That's right. This is a new day, the day the Lord has made. Come on, y'all. Get on up and rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody. I praise God. Man, I see you, Sister Ellis. You know, popped on. Come on. Who else going to pop on? Oh, man. I know you all coming on. I know Sister Johnson going to be right there. Elder Tom is going to pop on, Sister Queen, Minister Hayes, Elder Russell. Y'all be coming on, coming on, Sister Pam. Yep, I know, Sister Helen. I know you all going to be popping on just a moment, Brother brother Tony. I know it's going to happen because you all been persistent. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you he's coming on, y'all? Man, it's so good to uh, be in fellowship. So good to be under the toolage of the Holy Ghost. That's right, that's right. Leading and guiding. Sister Pat, see ya, see you, girl. And so good to have the Spirit just uh, just uh, among us, leading and ordering our steps, man. I'm excited about that, and I hope you are too. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this wondrous Wednesday. Thank you for giving us life and breath and everything else this day. God, you chose to give us life today. We didn't choose it. You chose to do it. What a blessing, what an honor. God, many of us laid down and we prayed and we went to sleep. We wouldn't have never known, God, if you had not chose us to live this day. We just would have went on in and waited for you to uh, uh, bring us on home. But God, you chose to give us another day this day. I pray, God, that we will not take for granted life on this wondrous Wednesday, this day. God, I pray for those who are, who are tuned in this afternoon and those this evening. The same goes with each and every one of us. The prayer is the same. Let us be open, God, to what you're saying to us and do it. Come on now, Holy Spirit. Order your steps. Order our steps and our stops this day. In Jesus' name, the God's people say amen. All right. Have, good to have you all on. I see you, Brother Billy. All right. Now. So we, we are actually on part six of understanding the value that relates to prayer, us being Christians. Now, now see, there, there, there is so much that we have been afforded to by God. And I pray that this is encouraging, encouraging you to understand the value of Christianity. Okay, today we're going to talk about prayer. And... You know, what I found out, uh, Sister Johnson, good to see you. What I found out that prayer is so powerful. I mean, so powerful. But I think oftentimes we may forget the power that goes along with prayer and how it opened up doors. I see you, Brother Donald. And it opened up doors that I'm telling you can't no man close. Prayer is so essential. That if we didn't do it, brothers and sisters, you wouldn't be where you at today. Now, I, I believe, I believe, you know, at times we get, we get discouraged because we're prayed prayers and we have not seen it come to fruition. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. I don't care if you can't see it, but know that God is doing something with every prayer that has been presented. First of all, we are praying to a father who loves us. Second of all, we have Jesus who's interceding for us. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit going to lead us into all prayers. And so we have something that is so magnificent when it comes down to understand what prayer is, what prayer does, and the options we have. Now, I'm telling you from this day forward, you need to become a prayer warrior. I mean a prayer warrior. I see you, Sister Sharon. You need to become a prayer warrior. I mean pray about everything. Do you hear me? I mean everything. Don't leave it up to Pastor Rob to pray for you. Pray for yourself. Now, I know I'm going to pray for you, but you should pray for every single thought, everything that you do. And I am telling you, brothers and sisters, when we do that, you will see the hand of God move miraculously. And let me say this now. I got to say this. When you pray and you see things come to pass, 
Don't you be sitting back on the cup wondering, did God really answer that prayer? Yes, he answered that prayer. And he's doing more than you can imagine. But it is time for us to understand the value of, as Christians that we have been afforded to us about prayer. See, here it is. The Roman word found on this Wondrous Wednesday is in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. Here's the bottom line. The Bible says, devote yourself to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. Oh, my gracious. Devote yourselves to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. Now, brothers and sisters, when I look at these two important aspects of prayer, being watchful and thankful, I got to just go back to understand there's something key to that, though. It's something key to prayer. It is being devoted. Is devoting yourself to prayer. You got to devote yourself. You got to give a large part of your time to prayer, a large part of your resources and understanding to prayer. You give a large part of that because it doesn't work if you are not being devoted. Paul telling the church, you got to devote yourself to it. I know sometimes people be like, oh, Pastor Rod, got to pray. Let's pray short. Don't, don't, don't try to limit how long I pray. Come on, somebody. I ain't trying to limit how long you pray. Pray, open up your mouth, man. Talk to God. See, prayer is all about communicating to God. That's what, you, that's what we do. Sometimes, you know what I found out? We so devoted to talking to one another all the time. Hey, man, you forget. Man, you ain't talk to God at all. See, here's the deal. What I found out, when you're in communication with each other, you know, and we're talking, you know, you're saying something, I'm listening, and I'm saying something, you're listening. Hey, man, we're communicating. But see, when you're talking to God, guess what? God will talk back to you. How so? By you opening up your word. So you can't be devoted to prayer and not being open to the word of God. Now, it's essential that we understand the power. See, Satan don't want you to be a devoted prayer, a prayer warrior. You know why? Because he know prayer moves things. Prayer gets stuff started. Prayer alleviates his plan. Come on, somebody. Satan got a plan for your life, but prayer alleviates that because you're devoted. You're spending time. You're talking to God. And you're declaring the decreeing. I'm telling you, I don't care what nobody say. I love prayer. I love talking to God. And I love the fact that God has made a way for doors to open that nobody can shut. I am telling you, when I had came out of that surgery, the same day I came out of that surgery, I had my mouth open and my eyes closed and the doctors and they were wondering what in the world? He should not be talking. He just had, he just had surgery, major surgery. He's talking right now for 25 minutes. I don't even recall what I was saying, but the lady told me, she said, you were saying, May the Lord face us, uh, may his countenance shine upon my face. I had no recollection that I was talking right out of surgery. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Y'all pray for speedy recover. Y'all pray that it was going to be a great surgery. You pray that everything's going to work out. Did you not know that your prayers work? You prayed for me and I prayed for myself. And then they, listen here, when prayer, listen, open up your mouth. Be devoted to pray stuff that don't even make sense to you. Be devoted to talk to God about the impossible because he can make things possible. Come on, somebody. You worry about that job of yours? When the last time you prayed specifically for the job? You ran, you worry about the children? How often do you pray about your children? I'm talking about getting into prayer. I'm not talking about some of the surfacey stuff that we see. I'm talking about diving deep down in praying for the character of your child. I'm talking about praying for the personality that you see about your child. I am talking about praying about that co-worker who you thinking, man, hey, that demon is all in them. I'm talking about praying a covering over your co-worker, a covering over that boss that don't make sense to you, wondering why you always being attacked. I'm talking about praying love over that boss. I'm talking about praying for a community that we complain about. When the last time you said, God let me to be the one that's going to help move the mountains and the needles of the community of violence. I want to talk about prayer. Come on, somebody. Oh, boy, I'm talking about them being devoted to prayer. I'm talking about, man, spending hours praying. 
Brothers and sisters, there are times we binging and we binging on movies and binging on sports and binging on food. We got stuff we know how to binge. When the last time we've been binging in prayer? You want to move the needle of life? You want life to change? You want the community around you to change? You want a relationship to change? You can't do it by power of your own strength, but you can do it by prayer. About being persistent. Here's what the word says. These two aspects. Let's look at them. Believers are to be what? Watchful in prayer. Not just praying, but you got to be watchful. That means you got to understand. You got to be observant about what you're praying. You got to be attentive to what prayers you're trying to send up. Because sometimes you send up prayers. And guess what? You are living them out today. Well, God, I really want that job. God gave you the job, but you didn't pray about the job in detail. Like, Father, I want to pray. I want to work for somebody, God, that's, that will be receptive to the word of God, even if they're not today. I want to, I want to, I want to co-workers, God, that that I be unified with in the spirit. We both got come. We got we got a common interest. Come on, somebody. I am talking about not just looking at the financial part of your job. I'm talking being attentive that what comes along with it and say, God, because the way that they gonna pay me, I don't want stress. So God, how you de-stress the whole job before I even get there? See, brothers and sisters, we gotta be cautious when we pray. Now, I'm just talking about you got to be on guard, being watchful is being on guard. Sometimes you got to open up your mouth and say, God, my heart is heavy, but I want to be able to have a, I want to have a soft heart. And I am telling you, some things happen. Sometimes when, if you want, you don't want a hard heart, sometimes you got to be open to humility and be like, hey, man, I'm not going to respond pridefully because God has opened up my heart. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to be watchful. We got we to gotta be watchful for what we say and how we say it. Because the Bible says not only be watchful, it says we should also be number two, be thankful. Brothers, sisters, and sisters, we need to be thankful. And you remember what Paul said in Colossians, when Paul, he thanked God for all of them in his prayers. When the last time you prayed just prayers of thankfulness? Then God, I thank you for my family. God, I thank you even for that old rough co-worker of mine. I thank you because that rough co-worker draw me back unto you to pray for them. I see that my heart ain't hard. I ain't critical about that person because I'm praying for that person. I'm praying for this job that you have blessed me with. I'm sorry I've been complaining so much, but I'm thankful, God, for my children. I'm thankful for my community. I'm thankful for my past. Although I don't agree with something, but I'm thankful for my spouse. I'm thankful for relationships. I am thank you for the season. See, I'm telling you, sometimes we just got to go on a thank you prayer. I'm talking about a marathon. Don't just do no sprint or praying. I want you to do a marathon. Take your time. Come on, somebody. Did you not know that, that the major benefit of prayer is aligning our will with God's will is, which leads to greater understanding and to the greater sense of gratitude? Oh, I'm talking about understanding the value of Christianity that relates to prayer. Oh, prayer move mountains. Prayer, boy, I'm telling you, I'm one of the mountains that prayer moved. Come on, somebody. Boy, I'm looking forward to more of the things that God wants to do. And I'm telling you, I found out when you understand that you are connected to God through prayer, Matthew 6, 6 says this. But when you pray, come on, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Come on, somebody. Don't we like rewards? Oh, I like rewards. I know I'm not talking to nobody today. I'm a, I'm scared to tell you, man, when I open up my mouth, this basement is my closet. This basement is where my closet is. My car is my closet. Sometimes, man, I go in the washroom, that's my closet. Man, when I'm walking down the street, man, that's my closet. When I was in the park playing golf, that'd be my closet. Everywhere I go is a closet for me to speak to God. I don't have to be loud. I could be talking to him right in my head because he can hear you even when you don't even have an audible voice. Come on, somebody. Watch what you're praying for. Oh, you got to also, guess what? You got to see, man, how God opened up the floodgates when we're praying in prayer of thankfulness. I want to ask you on this wondrous Wednesday, are you ready to release your faith knowing that there's value in prayer? 
Come on, somebody. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep it simple, saints. It's not rocket science. We're going to remember 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 that says, pray without ceasing or without end. In other words, God does not intend for prayer to be an event take place only at a certain time. But what he does intend that prayer is meant to be an ongoing dialogue with him. Talk to him. Brothers and sisters, spend time talking to him. A lot of times we talk to our people too long. Talk to God. Go to God and talk to God. And watch what the father do when you start talking to him. I am telling you, when I was taking my son to school, man, Sunday morning, man, that boy kept talking to me for an hour and 30 minutes. I'm trying to tell you, what I realize is that all the times I've been talking to him, putting deposits in him, he's taking withdrawals from me and begin to talk to me, get the minister to me, letting me know what his plan is, how he want to see things. And I told my son, I said, prayer changes Everything, son. Everything that you just got through, tell me. Take it before the King of King and the Lord of Lords. And as you talk to me, keep talking to your father upstairs. I'm just your earthly father. Pray without ceasing, Blake, and watch you move the needle of the plan that God even put in your heart. Brothers and sisters, I am telling you, if you just open up your mouth and you declare and decree what prayer is to you, and I'm going to give you three things that you don't do in prayer. And I'm going to give them to you right now. Number one, prayer is not careless. Come on, somebody. All oh, prayer is not careless. It's not, a, an, a, an, it's not a time where we sit back and just, just say, well, let me, let me just pray for my, my food and that's all. No, prayer is, is not careless. It's, it's something that you honor. It's something that you take care of. Just like you got relationships with people, you ain't careless with those relationships. You talk to people, you give them some clarity about what you're saying. So don't live your life any longer thinking that or treating prayer as though it's careless. Number two, Prayer is not casual, neither. Hey, man, no, it's not just a relaxed thing and you just unconcerned. You wait for somebody else to pray for you. No, get up on your feet and get on bent knees and pray without season. I am telling you, you don't need a situation to arise to open up your mouth to talk to him. Talk to be preventative and not just reactive. Talk to your daddy, even though ain't nothing going on. Say, daddy, I thank you. Ain't nothing going on right now in my life. But I'm going to pray in advance. Therefore, if anything shall happen, I'm going to take the word of God and consider the pure joy and facing trials of many kinds because the testing of my faith, the bell of perseverance. I'm going to pray these prayers. I'm going to pray back the word to God. And number three, prayer is not going to be flipping. You ain't just going to flip and then pray to him. You ain't just be all shadow. You know, you want to really move the, meter, the needle of God's heart? You pray back the word of God, back to God. He got to release the blessings of that word back unto you. Prayer is not rocket science. It is you speaking to God what he spoke to you. Brothers and sisters, people often wonder, man, why things happen in our lives. Because, because, you know, hey, things that we can't control because we ain't asking God for God. Help me control the way I act. Help me control the way I respond. Sometimes, man, our cause and effects are because based on the way we do things. If we just, listen, just devote ourselves, pray without ceasing. Oh, my God. You want them mountains to move? You want doors to open and doors to get closed? Oh, you want to see the hand of God move in your life? Don't be careless with your prayers. Don't you be casual and don't be flipping with them. Be in the word of God. And watch what happens with your devoted self. Heavenly Father, all oh, we bless you on this wondrous Wednesday. We thank you for creating an atmosphere this time in our hearts to move, God. Oh, God, I pray that we would see the word of God as it is, the value of Christianity that relates to prayer. I pray that, God, we become prayer warriors. Oh, God, we be devoted, spend so much more time in talking to you than listening to the glue tube or listen to all the times and reading all the stuff that's on social media, the stuff that we put our time into, God, all it does is burn us away from what the mountains of life can be moved through prayer. God, I pray that we would take the challenge 
from God and cut down and cut off and reduce some of the other time that we use to be attentive to things that don't even really going to move the mountains of our lives. And take that time, be attentive to the prayer and be devoted and be watchful and thankful. And God, I pray, God, that we will never forget this day that you have made to help us to understand as the value of Christianity that relates to prayer is on our side. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen. Mwah! Come on, somebody. you just been kissed on this wondrous Wednesday, knowing that there's so much value in being a Christian that relates to prayer. Don't you ever forget that God has already released the power unto you. Use your power and your prayer tongue to get things done. Don't you wait. All you got to do is put it in the atmosphere and watch what God does. Stop complaining and stop being devoted to prayer. Hey, y'all, I love you. This is Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson. I am gearing up, man, to come back to church on Sunday morning. But I want to encourage each and every one of you all. Listen to me. My church is at 5628 West Washington. I have not been there, man, in about four weeks now. We still recovering from my surgery. I'm looking forward to Sunday, uh, November, uh, October the 30th is our, our Breast Cancer Awareness Sunday. We all going to wear some form of pink. Man, oh man, y'all know I can't wait to see the Rock of Our Salvation Church. Won't y'all meet me there this Sunday? We start our time at 1030. We're going to have praise and worship, and I'm going to bring you a realm of word that's on time. You don't want to miss Sunday morning. Oh my gracious. Come on, somebody. Hey, have a great, wondrous Wednesday. And I, watch this. Spend the next hour in prayer when I get done with this devotion and see what happens. Take care of yourself. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir.